This coming May, to be precise, on May 15, Philips will present its third Geneva auction, called the Geneva Auction 3. We stick to the values and rules we have established for ourselves, quality, rarity, beauty. We really want to pick the rarest, finest and possibly even previously unknown watches for our clients. Here today I have five watches that are some of my absolute favorites in this auction, made by Patrick Philippe, Vacheron Constantin and Audemars Piguet, just to name a few. Um, there's also an extremely rare Rolex. This is a 6542 uh, reference. It's the first generation of GMT Master made uh, only in the late 50s. This is from 1958, a watch that I know already from years before. I already sold it once at auction, then it made an all-time world record. And I think it's fair to say without exaggeration that this is probably the finest, best preserved, most original, crispest and most complete example known in the world. The watch has never been polished, has never been worn and has all the paperwork that was delivered in 1958 when it was originally sold in Vienna, Austria. It has the rating certificate, the manual, the receipt, just anything a collector could dream of. It also has the original gold bracelet, the famous big logo gold bracelet in 18 karat yellow gold and the Bakelite bezel that is so precious to any collector but equally fragile is absolutely intact and immaculate. I cannot think of an example as good as this and I hope and I wouldn't be surprised if that watch would once again be a show stopper and reach new record heights at auction. Another watch here today is this one here. It looks quite the opposite from the GMT Master. You probably wouldn't even notice it if you weren't a scholar, a collector and particularly interested in watches. Why? Because it's a very smooth reference 530. That's an oversized Calatrava type Patek Philippe from 1941 in stainless steel, as humble and clean as it can possibly be. The watch has a black lacquer dial with silver printing and applied Breguet numerals. It's the only one in the world ever seen and accounted for. The watch has, in my view, never been polished. We see the original satin finish to the sides, even on the winding crown. Amazingly, the archives of Patek Philippe confirm the watch as stainless steel, black dial, applied Breguet numerals. It was sold to Bratislava in 1941 and miraculously it has survived in absolutely mint condition. This will definitely attract interest from all over the world as it uh, really exemplifies clean and uh, sober design with a beautiful uh, color scheme between the case and the dial. Another Patrick Philippe in the sale for those who are interested in complicated watches is this 2499 first series. The 2499 is pretty much sort of the all-time superstar of Patek Philippe, perpetual calendar chronograph with the famous 13-line movement. And the first generation that succeeded reference 1518, that was the first ever uh, perpetual calendar chronograph, has already these lugs that we still know today up and including the 5016 that Philip sold for a record last season for only watch. But it has square chronograph pushers. The square pushers were only reserved for the first series. Only maybe 20 some watches were made between 1951 and 1956. This example here is one of the last ones as it was just made in 1956, the year the second generation was introduced. This example here comes from two of the most important private collections in the world, has never been at auction and I cannot recall a first series in such original, crisp and unrestored condition as this example here. Something younger, sportier, but definitely not less historic, is this A-series Royal Oak from 1973. In stainless steel, it's a reference 5402ST, the first luxury steel sports watch ever designed by any maker. It's a legendary model, 
that was joined later on by the Nautilus and other watches of that type. But this one here has on top of all its um, great uh, attributes one specific feature that can only be seen on the dial. The crossed can jaw, the dagger, the Omani dagger. Reserved for the royal household in Oman, these watches were made on specific order and given to high-ranking politicians, ministers, dignitaries, loyal servants, but also state visitors and diplomats. It has the typical greyish Audemars Piguet Royal Oak dial, but this time it is smooth, not with the um, sort of hobnail pattern, the guilloche dial, with diamonds. We only know two other examples in stainless steel of this watch here, and what's also wonderful is that it was sold to or via Asprey in London, who were the exclusive supplier to the Omani Royal Household for any watches they would uh, buy at that time. Another highlight is a watch that I was hoping to find one day, and I'm very pleased that eventually my team of specialists found it. It's the Chronometro Royal reference 4907 from 1954, made by Vacheron Constantine. The Chronometro Royal, or Royal Chronometer, has always been the top of the line model by Vacheron Constantine since it was originally made as a pocket watch. Observatory tested with a particular attention to movement adjustment and precision. Reference 4907 is known to have been made in yellow gold and a few examples in pink gold. No, as far as we know, white gold 4907 has ever been seen, photographed, mentioned on a blog, yet offered at auction. Well, here it is. One of my favorites. It has an incredibly uh, masculine yet elegant design. These rather chubby, um, strong, sort of rectangular but rounded lugs give it a unique look together with the wide, very prominent bezel. A beautiful hard enamel dial with the applied uh, Maltese cross on the dial. Um, I'm really excited to have that watch and I hope that collectors from around the world will respond as excitedly to this proposition as I am since the watch is here with us.